guys, welcome back to my channel and uh, episode number 20. And this is going to be the last one for this year 2018. And I just want to show you something real quick here uh, with this piece that I'm working on. And it, it is how to add mist into your scenes. And this technique that I'm going to show you, um, you can also use it for adding like cloud shapes and uh, anything that's uh, something similar to clouds and mist. Um, so uh, you could you could apply the same techniques to uh, both uh, scenarios, right? And usually when you wanna when you do mist or when I used to do mist, I usually just uh, sometimes with my lasso tool I'll create a shape. Say I just wanna add some here, and with a soft brush I'll pick a color and kind of paint the the uh, the mist into my scene here like this, right? And you know I could use the the uh, smudge tool and just to kind of smudge it out and uh, try to play with some shapes here and that sort of thing. But uh, I, I realized you, you could do this for something if you want to do something, let's say, more um, more stylized. Uh, but um, it will also take a little bit more time than the technique than that I'm going to show you now. All right. So let's get rid of this layer here. And what I did was... I brought in some pictures here, and uh, what I'm looking for when I look at these pictures is the value separation between the actual mist or the clouds in the in the picture and anything else on the image. And so here, the let me get rid of this layer here, and here you can see um, the mist and the clouds have a, a bright value, and then. The rest of the image, like the trees and, and the mountains, are real, a little bit darker in value, and that's great. That separation because uh, when I double click this, I want to get rid of that dark value and just keep whatever is here uh, that is mist or, or clouds, right? So I double click on that layer and I go here to blend if, and I'm gonna work with my dark um, value here. So just gonna slide that in. You're gonna see that it's gonna start kind of like erasing those dark values, right? And if I zoom in, there's like a really, there's a really hard edge here. And uh, sometimes that works, but in this case, I don't want that. So what I do is I press Alt and I slide the other side of that slider to the other side, and that gives me a range of value. And it gives me a softer, softer edge, right? So let's just say. Uh, just gonna slide that to a point where I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's just say that's pretty good enough, right? So now that I have that, if I were to darken this, the tricky part about this, if I were to darken it, and let's say I just use my hue and saturation here, and I go dark, you're gonna see that it's gonna start disappearing, and that's because the blend here is still active. So in order for me to remove this or apply this and then being able to darken that, uh, it's pretty much to merge it with another blank layer. And I'm just gonna merge that. And now if I go to my hand saturation, I'll make that darker. Now I'm gonna keep it. It's not disappearing, right? So now I can play with the values and try to match my scene a little bit better. So I'm gonna pick my foreground elements up again and play with my levels here just to kind of adjust that a little bit and add a tint of color here like this All right and i'm not to worry about the top part of the image because i'm gonna erase that in a minute but i just want to scale that up what i want to do is just to kind of separate um, my foreground element to the trees and the trees to the to the mid ground background and so on so I'm going to be playing a little bit with um, with the position of these layers just to kind of uh, play with the depth a little bit. And I'm going to apply a mask and I'm going to just erase what I don't need, which is the top part here. And there you have it. And let's say I'm going to duplicate this layer kind of position that somewhere here Let's invert that it's gonna put 
positions at right there. Right, so let's try a different picture. Now on this one, I really like this curve of this <clears throat> of this mess here. And I'm gonna try to use that uh, to my advantage here. Hopefully that works, let's see. So double click that. I'm gonna get rid of the dark values of the image. Just make a little gradient. I'm gonna merge that with a new layer so I can edit the values of it. I'm just gonna erase this bottom part here because I don't need it. And let's scale that up. Now the reason I wanted to use this picture is because the image already has this shapes here cut off by the trees. That's something that I was hoping to use and maybe that could work. So let's scale that up a little bit more. Let's put a mask so all these top part doesn't become too confusing. Let's make sure we paint on the mask here like so. I think it's working a little bit better there. And let's move that all the way down here just to see how that looks. Or maybe here. Or here. It's kind of like an experimental phase where you kind of just play around with the pictures here. And let's actually tint that a little bit with some color so it doesn't look too gray. You go so that's pretty much the technique uh, I use this technique uh, probably with every single piece that I do um, most of the time so uh, it's a very very useful technique uh, you can use it for uh, doing some map paintings as well and then um, in some other instances where you want to create some different effects but um, but this technique I think is super super useful and um, I'm gonna keep working on on this new image doing adding some a little bit more mess and playing more around with separating some of these um, elements and um, and I hope you guys uh, like the technique and uh, if you get to use it on a piece and you want to show me please feel free to tag me on it or put it in the comment section so I can check it out and I'll see you guys on the next thank you